what I am about to sh describe can be very dangerous if used improperly. So make sure you get someone that is qualified. The reason for this video is because my Alltech bucket truck controller valve was not functioning. So I took it among myself to figure out how everything works. Since the companies both Alltech and Turek are lousy at supplying technical support. That's right, both offer no help uh, but uh, rely on the customer paying for information through some mechanic on site. Good luck if you have an older uh, bucket truck like mine. Not even their manuals, which I paid hundreds uh, for, uh, were all shit. Most of the drawings were tiny and not clear. There's a shitload of nothing, uh, but they talk about safety. The troubleshooting section is for 7th grade individuals asking, and they ask you if the fluid is at level, etc. I even contacted AirTroll, the manufacturer, it's the air pressure switch, and the guy gave me the wrong information. My question to that clown technical support was I had a brand new switch from a supplier that did not seem to work no matter where I turned the adjustment screw in or out. All switches have a way to adjust their settings. Technical support couldn't understand it either and suggested I try a second switch I purchased to see if I had the same problem and to return the defective one for a refund. To check for continuity on the new switches, I connected them to an ohm meter and turned the screw in until the normally open contact should have made contact. Uh, I tried in and out screwing them, nothing worked. Then you're supposed to back it off uh, half a turn or so after making contact. Both of my new switches showed no contact happening, so I decided maybe it required some air pressure. So I used some extra chainsaw carburetor tubing and blew through it to the switches. Sure enough, there was contact in the micro switch. Technical support should have known that. At one of the forums online, some supplier of parts wrote how to test and adjust these switches. Well, he was wrong too. It may have been a PDF written by Alltech or Turex, I don't recall. He wrote that uh, to set the switches, you need to turn the screw in until contact is made and the RPMs of the truck engine increases and then back it off about a half a turn. Again, this guy was fucking wrong because when you turn in the screw, it increases the air pressure required to make the contact. If anything, you turn the screw out, which reduces the amount of air pressure required to make the switch click. Okay, after all that, now on my truck, I replaced the switch and still the system was not working, which suggested I have a leaky pressure pump at the bucket control valve. The piston seal must be defective. It cannot be the eighth inch tubing since they uh, appear to be very durable. As you can see in the controller arm image, it takes a lot of work to replace that seal. It can be done in the bucket, but if, you, uh, if you're willing to work in such an awkward position and for long hours, there are lots of linkages that have to be installed just right. So my next best uh, thing was to simply jump the existing switch on the platform with a vehicle starter or jumper switch and a length of 50 feet of uh, double strand wire, like an extension uh, cable. Initially, I used the, an old vacuum cleaner cord. To get at everything and to remove those switches in the switch box, I had to remove it. Uh, using a chisel to break it away from the two screws that were rusted solid. That was more bad engineering from Alltech or Turek, whoever the fuck did that. A better way was to mount it to the side cover of the platform control valves. Not shown here, but you get the idea. The mounting screws for the switches and the terminal board uh, inside uh, were attached from the back using flathead screw, which is why I had to remove the whole damn thing. Anyway, as I show in the image, there were two switches. One did not have uh, tubing connected to it, which suggests uh, tools. 
in the uh, for operating tools. In the drawing, I only show one switch wired, and as you can see, the push button switch merely makes contact with the black and red wire, as does the air pressure switch when it is working. Therefore, a switch in the bucket connected to the same black and red wire should do the same thing. The only difference is that length of wire hanging over the side of your bucket. Uh, what the heck? It works. You bypass the air pressure switch. You could also have someone pressing the platform button while someone is up in the bucket. That would require being very careful not to get injured uh, when the operator uh, rotates and etc. in the bucket. Work can uh, cease immediately once a person on the platform releases that safety button though. I'm sure uh, most older trucks uh, operate in that fashion with two people. That cable could also be fished through the lift arms, uh, much like the tubing, or strapped alongside using wire tires. I always uh, like to take things apart to see how they work if information is lacking. And as you can see on the pressure switch taken apart, uh, they use the same 10 cent snap switch that uh, are used in all sorts of simple, uh, similar functions. To get it out, I had to drill out the two plastic glued in pins uh, on the back you can see the diaphragm that presses against a small lever that activates the switch. Just so you understand, the air connection from the bucket to the switch is to protect the bucket operator from lightning or from high tension wires. Uh, it is also why the second arm is not metal. With the outriggers uh, extended you make for a good grounded system. Therefore, if you opt to make the bypass, be warned, you cannot operate uh, around wires uh, of any kind and avoid working during thunderstorms. The system is basically like uh, a squeeze uh, bulb in a uh, baster, which is an alternative. Uh, you could use something like that, I guess, to apply that air pressure you need down there uh, for that switch. In the future, Turex or Alltech uh, should seek to use Wi-Fi systems to activate the main solenoid from the bucket. Thank you for watching. Visit us at LarryandJane.com for more uh, cool stuff.